Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Patrice Samara, and welcome to the Bold Beauty Project presents the Edward R. Ritfo Lecture Series, Creativity, the Triumphs and Challenges During COVID-19. This event was made possible by a grant from the Alan B. Slifka Foundation, and we are deeply grateful for their support. So right now, please have your cameras on, especially our speakers, and I will turn our program over to our moderator, Eva Ritvo, MD, Bold Beauty Project co-director and the author of the Beauty Prescription, excuse me, the co-author of the Beauty Prescription and the author of Be Kinder, The Transformative Power of Kindness. Eva, please go ahead. As Patrice said, I'm Dr. Eva Ritvo, and it's a big honor to be here today, bringing everybody back together. It's uh, one year ago, almost exactly, that the world came to a startling halt. Um, for me, many of you know, it was particularly difficult as I lost my cousin on March 14th and my half-sister on March 18th. So it was really a terrible, terrible month um, and trying to get back in the saddle now a year later. And Patrice, I really wanna thank you for all you've done this year to help me get through this year and to help keep our project moving forward throughout this really challenging year. Um, in addition to those losses, I lost my father on June 10th. Um, the good news is he made it across the finish line to 90. So we got to 90 on June 1st and he passed away peacefully in his home on June 10th. So the Slifka Foundation has been supporting the Bold Beauty Project since its inception. In fact, they've been our biggest donors and our biggest supporters throughout. And I particularly want to acknowledge Arielle Ritfo, the president and chairwoman of the Slipka Foundation, because nothing we've done would have been possible without her support. She was an early believer in the project and the mission. Uh, her initial grant funded the beautiful uh, video that you can see on our website. And that video is what's helped us do a lot of PR and helped us get into multiple cities. And so really greatly appreciate everything the Slifka Foundation has done for us. So today the purpose is to get us back together and start thinking about the future. Um, many of our Bold Beauty models have been incredibly inspirational and kept things going through this pandemic. And so we thought it would be a great time to share what everybody has done over the year as a way to inspire, not as a way to intimidate. Uh, when I looked at this program, it seemed a little overwhelming to see all these people doing all these things. And that's not our goal. Our goal is to remind ourselves that we're part of a community and that we can all work together to achieve our mission, which is to increase the visibility and the rights for all people with ever ability or different ability they may have. So today we're going to start with our founder, Shelly Bear. And Shelly's gonna tell us where she's taken the Bold Beauty Project during the pandemic. Shelly, are you ready? Thank you, Eva. And thank you so much, Patrice, for organizing all of this. So grateful for your efforts undertaking this event. So we're grateful to be here and I'm grateful to hear from everybody today too. So this is really, really exciting. So I'd like to share a little bit about Bold Beauty, like what we did over the last year, specifically regarding our model community. We realized, you know, very quickly that we weren't going to be able to be in person, you know, in our gallery shows in other cities for a while, you know, so what were we going to do to stay connected with each other beyond our social media, beyond our Instagram page and our Facebook page, where we could really connect live with, the, with, with each other. So we had an idea with some of the models, we were batting around different ideas and it began last July which was the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disabilities Act. So we thought we would have a discussion about that with some of our models. And we also realized we have a large community, many of you are on this call, of all the different models from all the different cities, nationally, internationally. So we have a large group of models and many of them don't know each other or haven't met before beyond their own city. So how do we gather them? And we began having Zoom calls in July to kick off you know, the discussion around the ADA, what it meant to some of the models. We had some speaker, identified speakers that shared their stories. We really 
liked it. We clicked, we met new people from beyond just Miami. So we had the idea to continue our gatherings through Zoom every month. And we kicked around a lot of names. We named it Bull Beauty in Action because we are all leaders. Many of us on this call, we're all leaders in our communities. And some of our women, especially a few from DC, I don't know if any are on the call today, they started inviting other women, not, not models. You know, They weren't models, but they were disabled women. So we started meeting every month around a different topic. So it's a shared leadership format. So I just want to say, I don't want to be, I wasn't the lead every month. So we started sharing the platform of, of different women, whatever they wanted to talk about. So we cultivated a lot of interesting ideas. October was Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So one of our models, Sherry, um, she could, I don't know if she made it today, she spoke about that when she went through when, when she had breast cancer and really encouraged the models to take care of their health, you know, importance of getting a mammogram. So it was really, it's really interesting. Um, and then one of the other models is a, a civil rights attorney. So she spoke, she led a discussion around the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, which was at, we were at risk of losing um, for the Supreme, and during the Supreme Court time. So that was back in October, November. November, we had a really good discussion around cultivating gratitude that was led by our, one of our psychologists um, who lives in Miami. She's not one of our models, but it was really powerful. And then Kat Magnoli, who's on the call in December, she shared her story about what it was like and how she developed her children's book. Um, so it was really, so it's been, we've been meeting every month for the last eight months. And in um, January, we brought in a guest speaker, um, Stephanie Woodward and Leah Smith spoke about their new project. Um, it's called Empower Her, and it's disabled women being matched with girls with disabilities. So she got us all revved up, you know, all the Bobby models wanted to be, you know, one of the um, mentors. So that was a great discussion. And last month, we had um, Rosemary from Washington, D.C., who's beginning, who had a scuba diving camp in the Keys for children with disabilities. She's been doing this for over a year. Not, I, we all live, in, some of us who live in Miami didn't know this existed. So many of the women on the call also wanted to be um, do scuba diving. With, it's adaptive scuba diving for people with disabilities. So that was a really powerful call. We meet the fourth Thursday of every month uh, from 5.30 to 6.30. This month, we're going to hear from one of our original models, Shanti, who's from India, and she's going to share her story. We're, we're keeping it to women with disabilities, but they don't necessarily have to be a, a bold beauty model. We average about eight to 10 people on the call. I see Carrie's here and Kat's here and many of our models come to this monthly event. It's really nice because as you know, we're all stuck at home. We all want to connect. And especially like the people disability community, it's a little bit harder to go out and about. So this is a way to reduce social isolation, make new friends, um, connect with new fit people and really meet cool leaders. Women with disabilities are really doing cool things. So that's it in a nutshell. I know I'm talking really fast. Sorry, Eva. It's um, okay. We have so many people. We've only given each speaker three minutes. So we apologize for cutting you off, Shelly. But no, I'm sorry. So, so proud of what you're doing and it's so beautiful. And I hope that some um, of our women listening today will be able to join on your next call. Can you write in the chat when it would be and how they should connect? Yes. You're aware yes. of that? Okay. Yes, I will. Are, sorry, are, Eva. I'm sorry for going over you guys. Okay, our, our next speaker, we're going to give a couple extra minutes to because she's a new friend and she's somebody that most of you have not met yet, but she is a real force of nature and she's a woman who's very much aligned with our mission. Her name is Mindy Shire and Mindy has a son with a form of muscular dystrophy and he had difficulty putting his clothes on. So Mindy, who was in the fashion area already, decided to have a small goal of changing fashion. And she's working very hard since 2000 and 
14 to make fashion adaptive. And she has made huge strides. Many of you probably have already worn Tommy Adaptive, Tommy Hilfinger's adaptive line. I know Joy was wearing it for many years. Well, we can thank Mindy for that. We can also thank Mindy for founding Runway of Dreams. And they are an absolutely beautiful organization who put models with different abilities on the runway and show off adaptive fashion. They had their first show here in Miami on Tuesday and it launched virtually on Thursday. Uh, Chelsea Bear, Joy Nestor, LaQuantis Morton, as, as well as uh, some thumbs up from Carrie's group models. And my, my former uh, assistant from University of Miami participated. So we had five of our community participating with Runway of Dreams. So we were very, very, very honored and very excited. And we're so thrilled that Mindy had the time to talk with us today. And she can tell you a little bit more about the organization and her mission. And we hope this is the beginning of a long and beautiful and productive friendship. Mindy, where are you? I'm right here. Yay, welcome Mindy. You're thank rocking the runway again. <laughs> thank you, and thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to meet and speak with you all. It is, um, I'm still smiling from the event on Tuesday and the launch on Thursday. And in case anybody hasn't seen it, it is on our YouTube channel right now on Runway of Dreams. And you'll get to see uh, many familiar faces from the Bold Beauty Project um, on the runway. And it was just such a, a pleasure to be able to work with them and Eva and the team. So again, thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this. So tell us what are, what are your next steps with the runway of dreams? Well, it's since the um, inception and, and creation of the foundation back in 2014, our goal was to really help educate the fashion industry understanding who people with disabilities are, the size and scope of the population, and the fact that people with disabilities care about what they look like, too. So the fact that we are now working with Tommy Hilfiger and Zappos and Target and Kohl's and Stridebright and Nike is a tremendous start in a very short amount of time. But our goal is to not only expand the mission, but to really ensure hopefully that someday every mainstream brand will have ad adaptive versions of their product. Um, we also uh, in 2019 formed another company by the name of Gamut Management, where we are a talent management company exclusively for people with disabilities. And we work hand in hand at Runway Dreams is our nonprofit partner because we really also wanted the world to see that this is a business opportunity. This is, this is an absolute uh, new category in the fashion industries and other industries of developing products for people with disabilities, rebranding who people with disabilities are in the public eye and really understanding that people with disabilities are people first. So the, the combination of the two companies, I hopefully, will be able to really kind of rebrand the landscape of this population. So Mindy, if some of our listeners or some of the Bold Beauty models or the Bold Beauty in Action with Shelly's group are interested, can they reach out to Gamut Management and Please throw do. their hat into the ring and see Absolutely. how they feel about and modeling? You, join, you just go to gametmanagement.com. Honestly, the, the only requirement we have is that you have to have a disability. Um, and we really encourage all different um, types of disabilities, all different backgrounds, ethnicities. We believe that everybody has a talent, whether that is being in a focus group, participating in developing product or being on runways or in the entertainment industry. Everyone has a talent. Uh, Mindy, I see a question in the chat. How about our international yes. models? Can they participate? We are international. We actually just got a, a request to host uh, a show in Paris. So we're really excited about that. Beautiful. So we love bringing our worlds together. This is very exciting. And Mindy, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. And everybody should really watch the Runway of Dreams Miami show on YouTube. It's only 30 minutes and it's so heartwarming and inspirational. I, I promise you'll love it. You can also see Mindy on her TED talk. Maybe someone could write them in our chat. 
Um, our next speaker is Robert Zuckerman. I think probably everybody on the call, maybe with the exception of Mindy and a few others, knows Robert. Robert is a very famous photographer who was known for shooting in Hollywood uh, and worked on many of the movie sets doing the behind the scenes photos. Um, Robert, unfortunately, is not feeling well today. He was so creative at the beginning of this pandemic when I couldn't even see straight and I couldn't even figure out if I was hungry or not hungry or how to get food or what to do, trapped inside all day. Robert was innovating. And at that early part of the pandemic, he came up with an idea called Planet Portraits. And what he did from his hospital room and his hospital bed is over FaceTime, he photographed people during this pandemic. And he's put a collection of images together that you can also see on YouTube. So. Robert, we really wish you the best and the speediest recovery. And we're so honored to have you on our team and so proud that you would innovate so, such a beautiful project during the pandemic. Um, our next speaker who is with us today is Chelsea Bear. Uh, we got connected to Chelsea several years ago. She was a bold beauty model at Art Palm Beach in 2020. And we had the pleasure of doing Runway of Dreams with Chelsea. Chelsea has been very busy during this pandemic. She's an advocate for those with cerebral palsy. She also works both as her day job and her volunteer in the social media realm. So Chelsea, could you say a few words to our group today? Yeah, definitely. Um, and thank you guys for inviting me in and hosting this event. Um, so yes, my name is Chelsea Bear. Um, shockingly, no re a specific relationship to Shelly, but I know our, our last names are, are very similar. Um, but, but as Eva said, so I'm based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, I was born with cerebral palsy, so um, I've taken the time over the pandemic to really turn to social media, um, and I say in my, my spare time, so I, I work in public relations, which if you know the industry, it's, it's very hectic um, and did not slow down at all when it came to the pandemic, um, but you know, I obviously have been working from home for the past year. Um, so in my spare time in the evenings or weekends, I've been blogging and posting videos and images and stuff just about my experiences of living with cerebral palsy. And then beyond that, you know, just kind of being an advocate for people with disabilities, um, you know, talking, br bringing light to the things that we need to be changed um, through social media and really just connecting with a lot of people. Um, you know, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see I try to share my story in a way that's lighthearted and fun because I truly believe that topics about disability don't need to be scary. Um, you know, I, I try to make them more comfortable so people are more open to learning about them because I, I, I'm passionate about feeling, you know, if if more people were educated and familiar about people with disabilities, they wouldn't be as scared of them or, you know, would be more willing to help. Um, so that's really how all of this formed. And um, yeah, if you have any questions, Eva, please let me know. But that's kind of- Why did you write in the chat how people can follow you, Chelsea? Okay. I had a really beautiful time listening to you when you were with your sister and you were talking about what is it like to have a sibling with a disability. And that obviously touched my heart because I'm the mother of two daughters. So we love you, Chelsea. We love everything you're doing. And I know you're going to be rocking that runway with Mindy in the future. I'm really sure of that. Um, next, we have a really inspirational and dear friend, Aaron Brown. Aaron and I met on my birthday two years ago. We connected, I think, through the Bold Beauty Project and the power of social media. Aaron is based in the Bahamas, where she is the director of the Office of Disabilities and Compliance at the University of Bahamas. Aaron was also in our show in Art Palm Beach in January 2020. That was a particularly incredible show. Uh, little do we know that we were going to have be in time out for a year after that. But that was a very exciting show. And Aaron, unbeknownst to any of us, surprised us, flew up. And when we were in the middle of our presentation, our fashion show, nothing on the scale what Mindy does, but we had a small fashion show called Inclusivity is the New Black. Um, Joy named it. And we had some of our models uh, walk in and roll in the runway with some of their friends. And in the middle of me speaking, in the back of the room walks in Aaron Brown. So Aaron, thank you for creating that moment that we'll never forget. And to come like that and surprise us in Palm Beach was extraordinary. I know, Aaron, you have been up to some very important things that I know our, our women on the call and our men on the call are going to want to hear about. So Aaron, uh, without further ado, take it away. 
Thank you so much, Eva. Listen, the whole meeting of your Bold Beauty Project has been a life-changing one for me, especially living in the Bahamas. This community is an amazing community. I'm loving all of the faces. Um, and Mindy and Chelsea, I'm going to be on one runway with you too soon. I'm, I'm speaking it into existence. But yes, I am an above-the-knee amputee. Um, so I wear a prosthetic or a pair of crutches or a wheelchair. I have choices <laughs> that, so, that I use every day. I'm also an athlete and I'm an um, inclusion consultant. And so my whole life is around um, disabilities and, and how to be inclusive and accessible and the opportunities. So during COVID-19, I must say one of our triumphs has been that COVID-19 has pushed the access agenda. Access is a human right. And so we now have to speak more about access, whether it's health, whether it's specific guidelines, whether it's digital access, communication modes, all of these things that we have experienced as gaps within our community. And now we get to talk about it without specifically even saying, this is just for persons with disabilities. No, it's for all of us. Access is for all of us, the human race worldwide in order to be sustainable. And so some of the challenges were the fact that we weren't getting communication modes, closed captioning, ASL. We weren't being spoken to about specific guidelines when we're talking about service providers, caregivers, um, living independently as a person with a disability, being a mother, a parent, a professional. So during this time, we've been waiting to come to the table. And now we're in a place where our voices are amplified globally. And I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm excited to be here today. And I'm excited to be a part of a global initiative because Bold Beautiful Project is coming to the Bahamas and the Caribbean. You've heard it here first again. <laughs> because we made the announcement a last time at West Palm Beach, but COVID isn't going to stop us, Eva. COVID is not well, going to stop us, ladies. Erin, I know we had talked last year about bringing the project onto college campuses, and that's one of the things that I'm so passionate about. I know Mindy has been coming to college campuses, so I'm hoping that there's opportunities to learn from Mindy and our new friends of how to bring this successfully to college campuses, because Erin, with her connection to University of Bahamas, is going to be our, our test pilot. Um, for me, it makes so much sense because you have the students there with disabilities. We could turn them into celebrities on campus. <laughs> um, next, we're going to go from the Bahamas all the way over to the other side. We're going to Germany, to Berlin, to meet Valeria Gertzen. Valeria is a longtime and very dear friend. She's an art consultant. Um, I was introduced to her through Robert Zuckerman, and she has come to Miami almost every year to participate in Art Palm Beach. And when we go to Art Palm Beach, we work from 8 in the morning to 11 at night for days in a row. And Valeria, it was very hard not to have you here uh, for this year, and there was no Art Palm Beach. So tell us, what have you been doing during this pandemic over in Berlin? First, good night, everyone. It's late here. It's afternoon in, in your houses. And um, I just came back from an art tour in Dusseldorf. So I just made it on point to join this international meeting. And I'm super glad to see all of you. I made a lot of friends with, with Eva and both Beauty Project and Be Kinder. I'm super happy to be a part of your crowd, Eva, and I'm forever thankful for Robert to introduce us and also to meet so such a dear friend, Lisa, new last year. And I'm super sad that we couldn't get together. So during the pandemic, I started so many projects as you can believe it. <laughs> and um, so first, and the most um, impressive thing I think is I started the um, digital poetry club for the House of Poetry Berlin. So a very institutional thing. And uh, it became super successful, especially for high risk patients. It was like an option to still be a part of, of life and creativity because I, I give like an activating um, word like a topic and everyone starts writing to this topic and then we like we share it in a in a document system and everyone can like comment on it 
and they can call each other and uh, so give feedback and make the poem better. And then we, come, we get together and present the poems, like really speaking out with good pronunciation and like a little show and everyone gives their feedback. So I'm hosting this for the House of Poetry Berlin. And also I started um, conducting the cultural program for a Jewish museum. And we are also preparing a Robert Zuckerman show of his survivor portraits. And uh, so we are really looking forward and hope he gets better soon. We pray for him every day and everyone is already excited to meet him online. We, we couldn't get this done yet. And we really hope um, that he gets better and we will have a show with Robert and him also participating digitally um, in Germany on the big screen. And um, yeah, it's Beautiful. great to see you all. And, um, we missed you. We're so proud of everything that you've been doing in this. And also, I know you were very instrumental in Robert Zuckerman's Planet Portraits. And that's such a beautiful project and photographs from around the world. Thank you and continued success. And we can't wait to have you back over here. And maybe Mindy wants to do Runway of Dreams in Germany. Let's find out. Uh, next, we have Deb Lewin. Um, Deb is one of our models from Texas who has an incredible, powerful story. Her motto in short is ride strong through life. And Deb has become one of my closest friends and biggest supporters during this pandemic. Um, Deb, Carrie, and I are a little, a little trio, and we've been spending all the holidays together virtually. Um, Deb has had not only the COVID challenges, but she's also had Snowvid because she is in Texas. Um, Deb, can you talk to us a little bit about the triumphs and, and challenges during this pandemic? Certainly. Thanks again, Eva, Patrice, and uh, it's been wonderful. You know, uh, some years ago, I wrote a book which was entitled One Brain Injury Will Change Your Mind, My Opportunity, My Story. Uh, now I'd like to share with you how being on, uh, having a ride on this Corona coaster will change your heart. My uh, life partner, Tammy, and I have been together 20 years, and last year we'd planned uh, to have our wedding. And when the coronavirus all started, we thought for sure it would be everything would be fine by November. We chosen a particular date in November, which was the 10 year yacht side, um, 10 year anniversary of my mother's passing to honor her as our wedding day. Things were getting better in the summer. And even though planning a wedding during the coronavirus would have for us included extra chairs so we could do social distancing, having people serve the food so not people were individually touching all the instruments and the, the, the bottles. Uh, you know, as most people on their wedding perhaps get the date of their wedding printed on, on serviettes and napkins, we were getting them printed on hand sanitizer and, and face masks. We really thought anyway it was still going to continue. It was a small wedding in our backyard and approximately 10 days before the wedding was supposed to happen, everything with coronavirus spiked dramatically. When we realized that our, our wedding, uh, we'd gone into lockdown in our city and we could have only 10 people, we immediately decided that we needed to postpone our wedding because we weren't going to put any of our family, family at risk at all. And what's interesting, what came out of all of this for me is not being able to do a lot of motivational speaking one-on-one -on -one with people or groups has gone on to, as we all know how to do, learning to do Zoom. And a lot of people were really wondering, how come we hadn't got married, you know, 15 or 18 years ago? It was fascinating to me that in the state of Texas, it only became legal for same-sex marriages um, in uh, 2016. So it would only, in you know, 2015. It was less than 2,000 days prior to us planning our, our wedding. So what was interesting on a lot of those is that a lot of people were during COVID experiencing what uh, people with disabilities, alternatively abled people, uh, uh, gay couples were experiencing our whole lives. A lot of people didn't know what that was like, had never really been in our situation, being told what we could and couldn't do, what we couldn't go and visit our families in the hospital because of COVID. We weren't allowed a lot of times because of our sexual preference, or perhaps they didn't have access for us because I was in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. So it really brought around a lot of conversation um, on Zoom. And I also think a lot of people generally 
felt a little easier communicating on Zoom. Even though we were face to face, they were able to, to uh, communicate about some of the topics they may not have wanted to speak about before. Well, Deb, that, it's wonderful to hear you know, some of the blessings that have come from that. And awareness is certainly one of the blessings. As one of my friends said to me at the beginning, now you know what I feel like. I can't <laughs> go here, I can't go there, I can't do all the things that I want to do. Welcome to my world. And that was a very you know, big wake up call for me. So I appreciate you sharing that. And thank you for being with us, but mostly thank you for all your support over these years. And thank we're going to dance your wedding. Yes, we just got to be a little more patient. Um, Kat Magnoli. Kat has been a Bold Beauty model since the beginning of Bold Beauty, and she is an incredibly inspirational person, and as you already heard, a children's book author. Kat, tell us how you've been doing through this pandemic. Um, you know, people think it's weird when I say that I've been really productive during this pandemic. Somehow. Um, yeah, it started out with something very out of the ordinary happening to me when I was inducted into the marquee who's who in America uh, list. And I was just completely floored that they reached out to me. I still to this day don't know who nominated me for it. Whoever it was, they're keeping it a secret. And I ended up joining many different advocacy groups, such as you heard the Bold Beauty in Action. I'm also part of the SALT alumni group, and I'm a Link20 leader. Link20 is a national disability advocacy organization. Um, so those are just some of the few that I've been, oh, and I also was appointed as the District 11 CODI board member for Miami-Dade County. CODI stands for Commission on Disability Issues, and we get partnered with commissioners from different districts and we discuss with them you know issues that people are having that live with disabilities whether it's accessibility to get into different places or if it's transportation issues so we do a lot of that and it's just really cool i've been able to meet such wonderful people through zoom and just really expand my advocacy and obviously also stay true to my roots of advocacy, which is dealing with inclusion for children with disabilities. So I have been writing books and doing articles and I actually am in the process of starting my nonprofit, which has been a long mm -hmm. journey for me. Um, so yeah, that's basically what I've been doing. And that's a lot. Don't don't say anymore. You're going to intimidate everybody on the call. They're going to feel, my goodness, how does one oh, person do all that? <laughs> but I will say one more thing about you because I hope that Mindy and her team are listening. That Kat, you were the former Miss Florida for Wheelchair America. Uh, what did I say? Miss Wheel Florida it's, Miss Wheelchair. It's Miss Wheelchair Florida for Wheelchair Florida. Yeah, for the Miss Wheelchair America Foundation. I am there. absolutely Thank listening. You. Yeah, so, <laughs> so beautiful on the runway. So I know that you guys have a nice collaboration in the future and it's so great to be bringing all our friends together today. Another friend that we have with us is coming in from New York City and that's Kelly Mahoney. Kelly has been a longtime supporter of the Bold Beauty Project. She's a photographer based in New York and she has come down many years to work with us at the show and be there in the booth and just bring so much heart and so much fun and spirit to the project. We love Kelly. Um, Kelly, you had an interest experience with your bold beauty model can you share a little bit about that with the group oh goodness it was it was so much fun <laughs> um we met with Teresa who unfortunately isn't here today and we shot in Times Square she is a military vet who has PTSD agoraphobia things like that so public spaces are not really her thing so we said let's shoot in Times Square <laughs> So why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, so this is this is what um, it looked like two years ago, uh, and this is what it looked like 
But let me just say that this was the image that was shown at Art Palm yes. Beach. And we have many, many iconic images from our project, but this is absolutely one of my favorite because it makes me think of New York every time I see it. So this image is, is just gorgeous. And we thank you for showing it with everybody here today. And I know that that was a very complicated and difficult shoot. I know Patrice was involved with it, other people involved. So when you look at this, don't just think, oh, that's a pretty picture. You have to understand the backstory and how difficult it was and it was cold that day and I think she even shared, had to share somebody's boots because her feet were cold. Do I have that right? <laughs> Those are my boots, yeah. 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 So Kelly, uh, thank you so much. Now you can show us what Times Square looks like for so, those who have not traveled this year. And this is Times Square uh, about a year ago. Just completely, yeah. completely empty. Uh, but Teresa was a natural. We weren't sure what was going to happen how it was going to go. Um, she got in front of the camera and she just shined. She was confident. It was like she was meant to do that. Uh, and it was it was such a wonderful, wonderful experience. Uh, and, and since the pandemic, really, I've just been gearing myself up for future projects with Bold Beauty. Well, on, on, on our to-do list, the top of our to-do list was Bold Beauty Project, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Um, and that was, you know, that's been put on hold very wisely at the beginning of this. We said, we're just going to put any in-person on hold until we can get through it. Although I must give a lot of credit to Mindy for being so brave and doing her runway show during this. We were all COVID tested 48 hours before then when we showed up to bubble that day, we had a rapid test on site. And it was the first time in one year that I'd seen a large group of people. So it was a pretty extraordinary event on so many levels, Mindy, but to be so brave during COVID, we, we give you a lot of credit for that. But now you know you have partners in New York for your next show. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, LaQuantas Morton. The Qantas is also one of our original Bold Beauty models from 2015 and has become a dear friend of the project and has been with us for, uh, I would say, every single one of our Art Palm Beach shows and our Boca shows and our art concept show during Art Basel. I don't think La Qantas has missed a show, uh, so we're super proud of her. La Qantas has had an incredibly interesting uh, pandemic. I, I will say that it's okay for people to say it was your best year ever because I think for some people... <laughs> It's been an extraordinary year. And I think for LaQuantas, you know, if you want to say it's your best year ever, you know, go ahead, be bold, say it. We love you. We're so proud of what you've done this year. So let everybody know. Um, well, um, I'm a little shy and humble, but um, about things that I've done. Um, you want me so, to tell them? <laughs> yeah, you go ahead and tell them. I'll, I'll let you. Well, there's a lot to tell. But as far as... Um, yeah. <laughs> The disability, uh, what I've done for my community is um, me and Patrice are working together with an investor to put together a website that's deal with, it's called My Abilities Marketplace. So it's basically for people with disabilities, they can come to, it's a one-stop shop. So if you have any, if you're looking for products, you're looking for adaptive equipment, you're looking for um, services, anything from ch children with disabilities to adults with disabilities. Do you have so we do have clothing, so there's a fit with Mindy with the Zappos, yeah. and the Target. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a one-stop shop because you have Amazon, mm -hmm. but Amazon it doesn't it doesn't meet it doesn't meet our needs. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And then you have Google, but you can search things. But Google, you got to keep searching and searching and searching, and that's frustrating. So if you come to if you come to my uh my abilities marketplace, you can meet, basically get all your needs met in one spot. Now you may have to navigate around through the website the keyword navigate around a website that's made for you. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm telling you, this is a really powerful group of people on this call today. And LaQuantas, that is an extraordinary idea and very, very exciting. Yes. And that's only a little bit of what you've done. Tell them about the TV show. The TV show. Well, the TV show was called Business Unusual. And so me and Patrice, we, we took that idea that I just mentioned and we basically launched it and we got we got to the next level in the episode. So right now we're still waiting to see how the editing is going to do and we're going to move on to the next level. So with Patrice Samar, awesome team and my investor, uh, Alex, I forgot her last name at the second, but she oh, is all in the, we're all together to bring it to fruition. So exciting, LaQuantas, we're so proud of you. And I think you've also had a happy personal year, am I right? 
<laughs> yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I, during COVID, you know, I, this is my model here is, if not when, now, and not the guy that I'm going to say, then who? So I found love and I got married in Egypt. <laughs> That's so, all that happened for Laquanta. She became a TV star, launched her own business, got married. <laughs> she forgot to tell you she was just on the runway with me. Oh, yes. I was on the runway today. <laughs> So she rolled the runway. I okay. rolled the runway. Well, the, the good thing is the person who's following you is Sabrina Neymark, and she's one of the few people on the planet who could keep up with that pace that you're at. So we're super <laughs> proud of you. We can't wait to see you changing the world. Now our community has gotten bigger and you have all these wonderful participants to help you. So we wish you all the best and in the marriage as well. Um, yes. Sabrina, are you here? I'm here, I'm present. Okay, Sabrina was introduced through a mutual friend about three years ago. And Sabrina is probably the hardest working, most understated person I've ever met. You just kind of go to Sabrina, hey, do you want to do this? And she's like, oh, sure, I'll do that. And then like 10 times more. And she never even tells you she's doing 10 times more. You're like, how did all that happen? So Sabrina took our show internationally and she had Panama, as her location because that's her home. And we had the most extraordinary Bold Beauty show in Panama in December of 2019. And then when we were doing the 2020 Art Palm Beach, all of a sudden Sabrina and all of her models and all of her family showed up in Palm Beach. We had the most amazing time. And this was literally the last event before the world stopped. But that didn't stop Sabrina because she still had an incredibly productive year. And she is the only one who was able to go on with a Bold Beauty project in its typical fashion. And she has seven new models and seven photographers. And you were very innovative with what you did with them. So can you tell our audience what you did with that project? Yes. First of all, Eva, that introduction was too much. <laughs> See, I told so you. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah. And now yeah. she's probably in between since I introduced her, she probably did some deal on the side, <laughs> figured something out, solved some uh, world problem. This is a, a huge honor to be here with all of you. Um, really, the stories and the people here are so valuable. Uh, so I had the opportunity to meet Eva on 2019, and I remember. We talked on the phone and two weeks after, I already had two models and I was so excited because for me, the disabilities, uh, it, it's weird because I'm gonna say it this way, but for me, the disabilities is like a passion for me, you know, to fight for the same human values that we all deserve as human beings. So I know a lot of people with disabilities here in Panama. So for me, it was like the best opportunity to give to my friends with disabilities to participate in the project. So we brought Bold Beauty Project to Panama in 2019. And then uh, we went to Art Palm Beach with three models. And one of them is here in the call, she's gonna speak after. And uh, then in COVID, uh, I thought about doing the Bold Beauty Project, but it was gonna be a little bit hard because I don't know, it's crazy uh, times. But I still didn't want to lose the opportunity to give the models, you know, their opportunity to glow and to feel good about themselves by just telling their stories. So we did a virtual exhibition, which we took the pictures uh, physically, and then we did a, a week of Bold Beauty projects. So we did seven stories, seven days, seven uh, artistic representations. Uh, and that's something that we added this year, which, which means that for each model, I had an rep artistic representation that, that talked about the story uh, of the model within like a dance, uh, um, a dance, it, it was, yeah, dance, either a song or a, or a yeah, a dance and songs. So, so it was very interesting to see how, you know, the beauty it's within every perspective and not just in the pictures. And I don't know, it was very interesting. So this year we're gonna do our third year in a row uh, with eight new models. And, you know, for me, the opportunity of doing Bold Beauty Project in Panama, it's not just about the project and its meaning, it's the opportunity to meet these amazing women that are amazing as who they are. They just need this you know, window 
to share those stories. One of the blessings with your project is you have a lot of young women. And so you see from our call today, you know, these women as they mature become so powerful. And so that's why to me and to my daughter, Joy, the word disabled or disability doesn't really fit because they're actually, you know, super abilities as Kat says, um, or, you know, they're just changing the world, women. Um, so it's wonderful to see these young women getting involved early on and hopefully our women are inspiring them. Serena, we are just so grateful for everything you've done. You are such a ray of, of sunshine in our life. And I think I speak for all of us when we say we love you and we're just thankful to the moon and the stars. And we know you're gonna keep doing great things for the Bold Beauty Project. You. Um, you have a model with you, Sabrina. Yeah. Is Sabrina Moreo here? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hey, nice to see you, honey. How are you? How are Good. you doing? How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. I'm just excited to be here. I feel like I know you since all of my life because we saw each other in our in our Palm Beach when we went on January 2020. Yeah. Like 10 years ago, January 2020. <laughs> Early yeah. thing. That crazy right we had crazy. So much it's crazy that it was just before the pandemic the boom yep. started so we had no idea great, like a great memory to remember like back in the days <laughs> back in the days when people left their home imagine I know. Um, so how did you do this year well actually it's been a great year for me too because uh well I just recently got my first job, so that's really yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's really Where exciting. Working? Sorry? Where are you working? At Dell's, Dell's Technology. Oh, yeah. impressive. Yeah, and the finance, uh, as a finance intern. But oh. yeah, it's been great. It's been a great year because um, apart from that, I I've been able to keep up with my physical therapy. I love doing uh, exercising and just doing sports in general so that hasn't stopped me like the pandemic hasn't stopped me uh, this year and the past year so it's been great actually and I've kept up with my motivational speaking because I, I have done a quite quite a bit of those and thanks to Zoom we can we can have that window like that opportunity so it's been great and actually I fun fact I always uh, present my my bold beauty picture in the in the in the motivational speed because I think it's a powerful story to tell with that image of me standing up uh, kicking at the soccer ball like I used to it's it's a great image and people love it so I you guess. know, Sabrina, it is a great image. It's another one of our best images. And if people haven't seen it, you can go onto our website, look up past shows, Panama. And to me, that's an image that, that Mindy should have a peek at. Because when I looked at that image, it looked like a famous image. Do you know what I mean? It's just, yeah, it I know. And, it's a very powerful it's beautiful. Yeah. Aaron's also, you know, Aaron is texting me, you know, the, dis, the uh, athletes on this call, but we're going to get to a really, really, really incredible athlete, but we've got one more to get to first. So Sabrina, we're so proud of you and congratulations on a job. We love you. And we love all our Panama models and photographers. You guys Thank have been amazing. amazing. We hope to be together very soon. I think Sabrina is going to have me back in Panama as soon as it's safe. I'm coming. I'm Lisa. We have Lisa Nalvin. And Lisa is a, a Miami or Fort Lauderdale based photographer who had been working in, in, in similar fields for many years. And we got together only about a year ago, but I know she's gonna be very important to the future of the project because she showed up in Art Palm Beach and was there with us literally every second with not only herself, but her sister, Kathy and Kathy's daughter, Gabby. And Lisa took a photograph of Gabby with her bearded dragons, which are her therapy pets. And if you haven't seen that image, that's a must see image as well. Lisa. If you could join us, I think I'm going to tell a little bit about what you did because I think Lisa is very modest and very humble. So I'm going to just let you know that Lisa, oh, you can't see it because my background. Oh, well, Lisa started her own company this year that's called Our Collective Humanity. 
and she sells her photographs on there, but she also sells what I was going to show you today, which is a whiteboard. So I've got this whiteboard here. It's the only thing that I leave out on my desk and it's got one of her beautiful photographs and it says our collective humanity. And then I put on it, may our days overflow with kindness because you can personalize it with anything. And Lisa, this I know is your first venture into the space. And I just want to share it with everybody. If someone could put in the chat, our collective humanity, we have to support one another. And that's the whole point of this call is to, to support one another in all of our passions. At least is so talented, so talented. So Lisa, do you want to talk to us a little bit about um, your pandemic or the Bold Beauty Project? Yes. I mean, this, you know, it's so, when I just even getting on the line today, it's like I got weepy. This is my dharma. These are my people. This is from volunteering for Special Olympics 30 years ago. But, you know, when you are given a certain gift, you need to share it. And for some reason, this is what really moves my heart. And yes, it's been an incredibly difficult and challenging, but I did create a site. It's called Fine Art Flower Site for Seekers, which is for our collective humanity. And it has a, it's very much like me. It's very sort of self helpy and, but it's fine art flowers. But I miss humans. I miss doing this. I, and I didn't realize how much I missed this. And I did get to shoot a couple of people. And, and to me, disabilities are not entirely, it's physical, mental, you know, I work with children with cancer. I work with children, people that are dying, the elderly, the whole disenfranchised door is like, it's very cool what you said, someone said about also, is like everybody gets it, how we are left out of things because there's so much, you know, we are, it's not really an even playing field because some of us are more blessed than others. In, I mean, easier, life is easier, but that has been very uh, uh, enlightening. And it's amazing to hear because you would have people that are so resilient. And I think when you are facing disabilities, you tend to be resilient so that a pandemic doesn't stop you from moving forward. And that's very inspiring to hear people do it. But so yes, I have fine art flowers for sale and I have, but I don't want to give up I need this and you know I, I need to reach out again and need to create and co-create and I was great that I got involved with the Bold Beauty. This is you guys are my people you know I, I love this and I love everyone here and um, I can't wait to get back in the saddle and please include me if you want me to um, well, yeah. well we, we, we do and we're counting on you we're just trying to be patient a little bit longer and then definitely we we want to see you we want to hug you we want to be together oh that's beautiful that's yeah awesome. uh, so we're proud of you we're proud of everybody who's on this call today and that was so innovative what you did this year i see that anuk is with us um, we have another friend who is so creative and so talented. She is a friend that we also met at Art Palm Beach and she develops um, prosthetics and does the most amazing things you've ever seen. It literally will blow your mind. So I think someone just put Anouk's website in our chat. So I would urge everybody um, to check out her chat when you have a moment. Okay, we- I put, uh, Lisa, her, I put Lisa hers in the, in the chat, not my own, <laughs> but hey. <laughs> So we're very excited for Anouk because she brings a level of creativity that is quite unusual. You can see it just by looking at her earrings. So Anouk, you want to say a quick hello to our group? Yeah, hey everybody. Uh, I met uh, yeah, I met a team of uh, Bold Beauty and I also Lisa at uh, also Palm Beach uh, last year. I can uh, share my screen actually really quickly maybe. I do a lot with uh, prosthetics design um, and actually I'm so searching for models all the time so if you have people I work with uh, Victoria Modesta I create her legs if you don't know her look her up she's a bionic pop artist and uh, I create legs uh, for example this one starts to uh, smoke uh, this was, was at Art Miami um, she makes music with it uh, things for a showcase uh, things with uh, prosthetic arms uh, legs with um, with Tesla coils, and this was a project for um, Rolls Royce, so there was a leg that she was wearing that had a Tesla coil in there, which you can see here, and also recently we, uh, we launched an, um, an, a prosthetic arm for a dancer, Ancelina Bruno, which you can see here for the game Just Dance, uh, so we're, yeah, I'm doing a lot with, uh, with a lot of companies um, in order to bring more awareness to uh, yeah, how cool it can be to almost have prosthetic arms and prosthetic legs, sort of. I will drop my uh, website here. 
I think it, I think it's beyond cool. I see um, Aaron in the Bahamas. She says she's screaming. Oh my God, she's so excited. Yeah. So I think that Aaron, you and Anouk can connect with each other. I know Anouk, you're going to connect with Mindy next week. Um, yeah. so lots of good things are happening in today's call is really important. And I'm so happy that everybody was here with us. Um, there's two more to discuss, but don't worry. One, unfortunately, is going to be short because it's my daughter, Joy Nestor. And Joy um, was supposed to get her second vaccine March 9th, but March 9th was runway of dreams. So how ironic that the only day of the year that she's busy, she couldn't get her vaccine. So we pushed it back to Thursday, but she's still in bed. So she's not here today, but she just wanted to send her love to everybody. And um, Joy has been working this year on an adaptive product. So hopefully that product will be on LaQuantis' website and will be in Mindy's fashion shows. And Anouk, it's up your alley. It's a makeup product. I think you already know about it, but we're very excited that Joy is innovating as well. And she's been so inspired by, by all of you women. Okay, last and absolutely positively not least, is, is Carrie Grusin. Carrie, for those of you who don't know, had a um, high injury, which has left her with a difficulty moving, but also difficulty speaking. So Carrie is here with us. She's probably with Care, Clara, her assistant, and Laurent, her um, assistant's niece, who recently moved from Cuba to Chile to here. She's a high school student and an aspiring physicist and a brilliant young woman. So we're happy to have her as part of the Bold Beauty family today. But for those of you who don't know Carrie, Carrie is quite an extraordinary person. Um, she has started an organization called Thumbs Up International and their mission is to pair differently abled athletes. So if somebody needs help competing in a sporting event, they will partner you with somebody. So we had our most recent race this morning um, at 1030. We just wanted to scare Patrice a little bit. And uh, we went out on the streets this morning for the superintendent's 5K. It was virtual. We all had our masks on. But we had several people in wheelchairs and then other athletes came to push them. So Thumbs Up International is a very important organization to look up. Um, Carrie also holds two Guinness Book of World Records, one for the fastest female duo team in the New York City Marathon, the other for the most triathlons completed in the shortest amount of time. Is If that's not enough, she's going for a new Guinness Book of World Records. And as if that's still not enough, she has multiple Emmys. One of her Emmys is for a documentary called May I Help You? It's on YouTube, tells her story. It's so powerful. I just got the chills. Um, and the most recent documentary was actually done during the pandemic. And that is about one of her young athletes named Eli. And Eli um, is featured in that documentary. And I think just in December, they won a Suncoast Emmy. So that's very exciting. And lastly, hot off the press, Eli was in Runway of Dreams on Tuesday, but I heard the talent agents are already offering him more runway opportunities. So before we close, and I know we're over time, so I apologize for that. I just want to read these words from Carrie that she wrote to me um, a little while back, um, because I think Carrie does deserve the last word for all she's done. And Carrie wrote, and I gave this um, at a ceremony when she was being awarded one of her zillions of awards and I had the opportunity to introduce her. And Carrie said, we believe we are riding a tidal wave of another civil rights movement, a movement to respect the rights and abilities of all people and those with disabilities are frontline warriors of this movement. Now the part that pertains to all of us, Carrie says, join us and go tell it from the mountains. So I don't think I could say it better than that. And we have 71 people on our group today, which is incredible because it's a beautiful day here in South Florida. And we have powerhouses around the globe coming together. So Patrice, I am so grateful to you. I hope Ariella is still on our call with us. I am so grateful to her. Shelly, your brilliant idea is in fact changing the world. Mindy, we love you. Everybody on the call, we are so grateful that all of you have come together to move the needle forward and make this world a, a better place for all of us. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you everyone for being on the call. Uh, before we close, uh, I just want to acknowledge that uh, Aaron in the Bahamas is going to be running for the parliament in Bahamas. So we wish you an enormous amount of luck with that, Aaron. And uh, we hope you we hope you 
reach your goal. So we want to thank Eva, our speakers, all of you for being here. We want to give an especially big thank you to the Alan B. Slivka Foundation and Riva for Ariella for really making this possible. So hasta luego. Thing, Patrice, au revoir. Wait, 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 you reminded me of one more thing. On yes. March 18th, I'm doing a Pecha Kucha talk presentation. Ah. The topic is called the beauty of imperfection. And I will be speaking about the Bold Beauty Project. So I hope everybody who's listening today can join us again March 18th uh, for the Pecha Kucha presentation. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Love to everybody. Stay well, stay productive, stay happy, stay healthy.